So Luke chapter 1 this morning, I'm just reminded of a, um, I forget who said this, it was maybe David Greeno or somebody, but about, you know, ministers looking for the message. Yeah. And he says to me, there's, there's only one message. He said, there is only one message, which is the gospel. Praise the Lord. So wherever you go in the Bible, <laughs> and I found that from time to time, many times I'd start off with a message, the Holy Spirit would guide me then to where the Lord wants to say something. Which might be a mile away from where I started, but <laughs> I believe the Lord will speak to His people. And um, but I just want to start off and look uh, one this morning because it is coming up to the Christmas time. And um, I often thought about the Christmas message, and you know, I don't, I'm not getting into the whole, you know, spiritual versus commercial, and and you know, we don't need to trash that out in the church this morning. You all know that the reason for the season is Christ. Amen. And that's where we are. Uh, we need to do that. And one thing I always say every year that if if it was a thing that you could have the choice, right? if you ha could have the choice of getting rid of Christmas completely because they have destroyed it, um, or just leaving it there as it is, as a witness and a testimony that we can use for Christ, I would choose leave it there. Because I really think that it is a, wit a witness for Jesus, even though that they have hijacked it, they have made a mess of it, isn't that true? You know, they've, they've commercialized it, they've done everything to it. But nevertheless, at the root of it, it's supposed to be about the birth of the Savior into the world, which is an awesome thing, praise God. It's really the, you know, it, it differentiates the gospel from any other religion in the world, that God would send his only begotten son into the world. Okay, that whosoever should believe in him should have eternal life. Isn't that wonderful? There's no other gospel like that. There's no other son of God. There's no other Calvary. There's no other salvation. So when we, you know, when we look at, we call it Christmas, you know, what that is, is, is a celebration of the time that God sent his son into the world. And what is the physical mechanics of that? God became flesh and dwelt among us. That's what the mechanics of it is. How did that happen? Maybe look a little bit at that this morning. Because if you ask me to break down the Christmas message, and like if you ask a school, you know, our children to portray, you know, they'll always have donkeys and they'll have wise men and they'll have um, shepherds. shepherds and they'll have um, stables and a little crib, and they'll have Mary and Joseph and all these things. And you know an awful lot of them aren't even mentioned in the Bible, but who cares? Okay. <laughs> I still think it points to Jesus, which is a wonderful thing. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. But as I said, if you ask me to boil down the whole message, what is the miracle of Christmas? Now, forget about Hollywood and forget about the... What is the miracle of Christmas? And I believe it is what we know as the virgin birth. Yeah. It's the fact that Jesus was not born of the lineage of Adam, yeah. but he came directly from heaven yes. by the Father to a virgin yeah. named Mary. And that's what sets Jesus completely, as far as the East is from the West, apart from everybody else in the world. That's right. Because he came into the world for a reason, and that was to save the world. So if the world is drowning, how can another drowning man save another drowning man? You need somebody to be able to come in that can walk in the water, that can lift people up. And his name was Jesus. Amen. He was the son of God, and he had righteousness in every way. He had fullness of faith. And the most part of this, which is really, really important, is that he was sent. He was sent of God to do this job. So when God sends you to do something, he equips you. He strengthens you, he provides for you, and you will complete the job that God has called you to do. And that's where I'm kind of coming into this morning. Because Mary had a job to do, and so do you. Okay? Mary completed her job. She did her job. Praise the Lord. But I want to look at maybe Luke 1, 26 this morning. And we'll go from there maybe down to verse 38. Might comment a little bit here and there. If I'm going to say anything that I'm not sure about, I'll tell you. <laughs> okay? If I am sure, I'll, I'll bang the pulpit. <laughs> so the Bible says, In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel 
was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Okay? Um, one thing I want to say at the beginning, and it's a little bit of a kind of an introductory thing, but every year I preach something about, you know, around this sort of thing. And I think it's a good thing to look back at the Bible, isn't it? So we're doing a good thing here this morning. We're Christians. We're looking to the truth. You know, we already had a, a conversation here this morning about are the government telling the truth or are they not telling the truth? Well, look, <coughs> you know, I'll zip my lip right now, but I told you there's only one place where the truth is going to come from, is from here. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only place. Yeah. And here's the good news, you're plugged into it. Yeah. You're plugged into the truth. You have the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. okay? So if I'm doing the stuff that the government is telling me to do right now, it doesn't mean I believe them. It just means that Christ wants me to do this right now. This is what I'm doing. I'm just obeying Jesus all the time. Amen? Amen. Until we get to another place. But every year I kind of came across and I used to say to people, look, we're not sure about dates here. And I'm still saying we're not sure about dates because there's not an awful lot in these scriptures here that concerning when Jesus was born. But I wanted to show you a little bit more of what I found out this year, okay? <laughs> I used to always start off in verse 26. It says, in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel uh, was sent from God unto the city of Galilee named Nazareth, okay? So I always assumed that the sixth month was the sixth month from the first Jewish month. That's what I assumed. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The first Jewish month happened in roughly around our April time. That was the beginning of their Jewish year. Now, but this year, I decided to read this from the beginning, which I should have done in the first place, and realized that I was wrong. Okay? I was wrong. That sixth month is actually referencing six months on from Zachariah's visitation. Okay? Let me go back. Two verses. Right? Three verses. Let's go back, and I'll tell you why. This is only a wee introductory thing. Yeah. All right? Uh, so, you remember Zachariah? Yes. He was a Levite, high, a priest, he used to go in, the burning of incense, had a visitation, it's in Luke 1, go read it, you'll have great fun, you'll be blessed by it. His wife was called Elizabeth, cousin of Mary, and she was old, she couldn't have a baby, right? So the angel says to Zachariah, same angel, Gabriel, he says, your prayers have been answered, so Zachariah obviously have been praying, give me a baby, 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 I want it now, I want it now, I want it now. <laughs> and the Lord heard his prayer. Right, so we won't go into it. There's a lot of things regarding times and, and seasons around things that we pray for that I won't preach about this morning. Okay, but we're bang on God's timing when we're talking about Mary and Elizabeth here, right? So John the Baptist was, right, let's read it. You're saying, Alan, be quiet, read this stuff. So where we go from, um, let's go from 22. And when he came out, he could not speak unto them, but they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple, and he beckoned unto them and remained speechless. And it came to pass, as soon as the days of his ministration were accomplished, he departed and went to his own house. And after those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and hid herself, how many months? Five months. So we know that Elizabeth was great with child. She was walking like this now, this stage, right? <laughs> great with child. She was five months in. Thus hath the Lord dealt with me in the days wherein he looked upon me to take away my reproach from among men. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto the city of Galilee. Right? So she's five months in. Then the Bible says one month later, and I'm out of batteries, I think. Here, hang on. Or, no, you're still there. Still there. Hang on. There's a red light blinking here. Though. Maybe if you can get a battery. and um, I don't want to kind of be interrupted when I get really into the message here. Bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Now, <coughs> thank you, thank you, guys. So I'm good for another three hours there. Um, so then it says, In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent of God to the city of Galilee named Nazareth. Okay? And um, further on down, then it confirms that. And I'm kind of not seeing it. I should have marked it. Yes, in verse 36, the angel says to Mary, Behold, thy cousin Elizabeth has conceived, and her a son uh, in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her. Okay, so that's confirmation that what the angel was saying is actually the sixth month. 
right? So now, why am I mentioning that? What reference point do we have? We don't have any reference because we've lost the calendar now completely. All we know is was when Zechariah had his visitation. That's what we know. Okay, we don't know anything, but what we know is Zechariah was at, it was the time of incense. And he was a priest that was putting incense on the altar. So I was kind of Jewishing this out, trying to find out when did they put the, the incense on the thing. And it turns out that they do it all the time. It's perpetual. They do it every day, all day. But there is, here I'm going to throw something out to you, which is nice and seasonal, and you'll get a fuzzy feeling, which is really good. Right? Um, when they start the, the, um, up the altar of incense, um, and I will just give you a reference. You can look it up yourself. It's in uh, Leviticus 16, 12, and 13. It's actually started up in the Day of Atonement. Okay? So what they do is they take a coal from the altar. They bring it into the Holy of Holies. They bring the blood in. They put the blood on the horns of the altar of incense. So this altar of incense, I can't describe it to you, but there's horns on the side of it. It's made of gold. Mm -hmm. And they put the blood on the horns, okay, which sanctifies it, separates it. They take a coal from the altar, they put it in the altar of incense, and that's what starts the fire. So that happens on the Day of Atonement. Now here's the good bit. When is the Day of Atonement? Now please don't get, we won't get too bogged down in this, because we know that we're, I'm going for my calendar today, which, which is fairly good from the point of view that uh, there's 365 days in the year, right? Okay, we'll go with that. <laughs> There was still 365 days even back then, right? <laughs> even though Caesar Augustus and Julius Caesar have stuck their own months in between, they just hijacked a few days and named it after themselves. But there's still the same amount of time. Do you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, so if you go from the Day of Atonement and roll it forward six months, you actually get some... Uh, the Day of Atonement in 2020 was the 27th of, of September. If you roll it on six months, when Elizabeth was like this and the angel came, it was actually 26th of March. If then if you take Mary and add on nine months onto that poor lassie's thing, you put her right into the middle of December, <laughs> the 26th of December. Amen? So I'm just saying nothing, right? I didn't say anything there, but I'm just telling you that if, that's, if this started on the day and it does say that Zachariah continued on in the altar for his course until he was finished. So if it was a thing that he did start off uh, his office on the Day of Atonement and went in and started burning the incense, it would have been on the 20, 28th of, 27th, 28th of September. Praise the Lord. It's only a theory. Remember I told you, I tell you, it's only a theory. But it still was stick Christmas. Now, you think I'm saying that they set up Christmas because of that? They did not. They stuck it in there because of... <coughs> It was like just just pick the day. Yeah. yeah, it was a pagan religion. We know that our uh, yeah. day that the, it's, it's actually winter solstice, yeah. and uh, they just stuck Christians stuck a holiday in the middle of that to kind of distract it. So, anyways, look, don't worry about that. I just thought I'd give you that. Right. <laughs> That's free. But I want to get into it because as we go in here, and I can't put out everything um, in this because there's so much in it. So the sixth day, the angel Gabriel was sent of God onto the city of Galilee named, named Nazareth. Now, one thing I want to say is there's only four angels mentioned in the Bible that's actually named. Did you know that? Four angels. One was Gabriel, right? It means man of God. That's what Gabriel actually physically means in the Hebrew, right? He appeared to Daniel, and he appeared to Zechariah, and he appeared to Mary, right? And I personally believe that he was called to do this because he probably looked pretty much like a person. And he could, he, he could, you know, basically meet people without absolutely and utterly freaking them out, mm -hmm. right? Because if you stick an angel in, it's going to be 400 foot high. There's other angels, angels mentioned in the Bible. There's another guy called um, Michael. Michael. Yeah. Now, he's an archangel. And this guy can take on, you know, mass. He's prince, a battling angel. The prince of Persia. He could take on the prince of Persia. You know? So if he was sent down to a message from Mary, she'd probably be like this in the corner. Yeah. You know, Mary! <laughs> <laughs> you know, where Gabriel could come down and stand in front of you and give you a message. Now, I'm only talking, you know, what I'm thinking here, right? The other one's mentioned is Lucifer. Mm -hmm. We know that he fell and he became Satan. And then but there's another one in the book of Revelation called Abigadim or Abigadim. Abag and he, he loses the something out of the yeah, abyss. Okay, so they're the only four angels. So that's that for that. Okay, so here we have Gabriel. He's come down. 
His job is to give a message, and what I want to look at this morning is the message and one or two things about that message which we need to really think about. Because it matters to you and matters to me if you're going to serve God with the calling of God that you have on your life. What this meant, how, you know, how this comes upon us. And let's read it down, okay? So the virgin was espoused to a man named Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. Okay. Now, the first thing the angel said in verse 28, the angel came into her and said, Hail, thou art highly favoured. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Okay. Now, I'm not going to put an awful lot out of that. But that was just basically a nice greeting that told her, basically, I'm here because God has chosen you for something. Right. Now, then it pauses in verse 29. And it says, she saw him when she saw him she was troubled at the saying so it didn't say she was troubled at his appearance mm. she was troubled at the saying okay she was struggling with what's this what's going on here and she cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be now then again then in verse 30 the angel spoke again and the angel said unto her fear not mary for thou hast found favor with god and behold you shall conceive in thy womb and shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. Verse 32. And he shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And his kingdom there shall be no end. And then we pause again for Mary's little interjection. And Mary said unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And then the angel spoke again. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, the power of the highest shall overshadow thee, and therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, whom was called barren for uh, with God nothing shall be impossible and then in verse 38 and Mary said behold the handmaid of the Lord be it unto me according to thy word and the angel departed from her praise the Lord now can I ask you a quick question here how long do you think that lasted that whole interview there she didn't make him tea coffee didn't bring him in sit him down it was just like hail the lord mary you know you found a favor with the lord mary's going what's going on here and then he, he starts off on verse 30 and he says fear not mary for thou hast found favor with god okay and what he does here what the angel does here is he says seven things to mary seven things to her okay and we just look at them really quickly and then Mary asked a how question. How can this thing be? So clarify, clarify, please. You know, I don't understand this. Mm -hmm. And then he, he, he clarified it by saying, the Holy Ghost shall come on you and the power of the Most High shall overshadow you. Right? Which is the actual miracle. Mm -hmm. And then he gave her a little word of encouragement saying, your cousin that was barren is now six months pregnant for nothing shall be impossible with God. And Mary says, bring it on. And that was, that's what absolutely amazes me. Because in my mind, an angel appeared to Mary, says, God has a job for you, Mary. This basically is a high-level bullet point, seven things, which Alan is going to tell you in a second. Seven things is the reason for this. Are you up for it or not? And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Praise God. And it amazes me that when God calls you, when, so, like I asked you a question there, I asked you a question, how long do you think this happened? How long do you think this lasted? It was probably less than two minutes, three minutes max. That's our time though, isn't it? So somebody came into the door and went, blah, 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 for three minutes. And then I turned around after and said, Bobby, what did that person say? And you said, I don't know, you know, but Mary totally took it. And the reason is, if you have an encounter with eternity, it's like as if it's not measured anymore in time. It's not the time that matters. The message was delivered. The call was put upon her. And she responded to the call. It probably took two minutes, three minutes for that to happen. In our time measurement, 
But when God visits you, two minutes can be, feel like hours. It can feel like hours because it's imparted to you. There's no rushing. There's no struggling to understand. You know, there's just that impartation of, praise the Lord. You follow what I'm saying? And you know when God speaks to you is that sort of thing happens. Now what I'm amazed about and what I want to bring you to in this message is Mary never asked the Lord, what's the details? What's the small print here? What do I have to do? You know, is there, you know, am I going to be able to do this? Can I do this? Because Moses did that. Moses says, sure, I'm only a man. I can't speak. I'm not able, you know, blah, blah, blah. And the Lord said, who made your mouth? You know, and then, you know, the Lord was kind of like equipping him. But just Mary said, bring it on. Bring on the calling. I want to do this. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and it's absolutely wonderful because I want to say there was no small print here when the angel came in. There was no details of what was going to happen next. Mary trusted God. She trusted the Lord with the carrying out of this calling. She did ask. She said, I yeah. know you're not a man. Yeah. But she just wanted clarity. How is this going to happen? Yeah. And a lot of people ask the question, like, how come Mary can ask that question and poor Zachariah was struck dumb? But it was two different questions. And I don't want to divide them up, but Zachariah's question was in unbelief. He said, you know, exactly what Zachariah says, Where, wherefore shall I know this thing? How can I understand this thing? He says, for I am old and my wife is old. And the angel says, you keep your mouth shut right now. <laughs> you know, so Zachariah was zip the lip until this happened. Right? But Mary's question was not an unbelief. Mary's question was, please clarify me how this is going to happen. Do I have to kind of wait till I get married to Joseph? Because they weren't supposed to be married, they were engaged. And the angel says, no, 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 no. No, the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you and the power of the Most High shall overshadow you. And saints, I'm assuming this morning that every one of you know that truth here that's listening to this. Because that's an awesome truth. And I try to imagine that. Now, I don't want to be crude. And I don't want to get too clinical or too graphical in here, but this was a physical womb of a woman. Yes. And she had physical eggs in the womb. Yes. And normally when mommy and daddy, who love each other really much, right, and then they're going to have a baby. Now, I could be wrong, and I'm just being very careful here, right? There's usually countless millions of little fellas flying into that womb, all competing to be the boy. That's right. Or whoever happens in the end. You follow what I'm saying? But something happened. God dropped one seed into Mary's womb, Jesus. That's right. And what's the term? Is it ovulate or fertilize? Is that the word? Fertilize the egg. Jesus was planted in her womb. I don't know how or where God, but God did that. The seed was not from any other man, but it was from the Father. God put his son in her womb. Bloodline. Bloodline matters too, and I didn't want to talk about that this morning. No, I no, I didn't mean I didn't want to study it because it would be a big study that we can do that. But you understand the the the, the gravity of that. Praise God, because that separates Jesus from everybody uh, uh, that's in the world. Now, um, I said I'd give you seven things, and I'm kind of running down on time here, but I'm going to give you seven things. So the angel says, okay, the first time the angel says, she says, the Lord is with you, Mary. Okay, the Lord is with you. First thing he said to her. Second time, so Mary told her in her mind, what's this type of the salutation? And the second time the angel spoke, the angel said, fear not. And then he said, you shall conceive in your womb. Right, so the first thing he says, you will conceive. Second thing he said, you shall bring forth a son, not a girl, a boy. Right, I'm not going to get off on that this morning. That would really mess with people's heads nowadays, wouldn't it? It's true though, you know, your boys trying to be girls and girls trying to be boys and I'm, am I really what I am and pronoun. I know one thing, I, where I used to grow up, you wouldn't get away with any of that stuff. <laughs> if you were confused about who you were, people would straighten that out very quickly <laughs> or you would wouldn't survive in the street. Sure you gotta be a tough, yeah. you gotta be a tough man to grow up in the oh, street okay. I grew up in. Anyway, skin. I got myself wrapped in my knuckles by the PC police over that, but look, <laughs> The idea is, is I go along with the way God destined things to be and God um, brought boys in the, 
world that you brought girls into the world. Isn't that what it was? So you don't put that up on YouTube. I am putting that up on YouTube, yeah. So bring forth, I'll put my address in there as well if you want to contact me. So bring forth a son. He brought forth a son. His name is Jesus. The angel said this, okay, so we're three in, you'll conceive, you'll bring forth a son, his name is Jesus, and he shall be great. Okay? Yes. Isn't that wonderful? Yes. So it's not about Mary just having a baby now, it's about what the baby's going to do. And that's very important, think about that. Because you think of it in terms of you, Mary had a physical Jesus in her womb, right? She had a physical Jesus in her womb, but you have Jesus in your heart. Now, it's not for you that Jesus is in your heart as much as it is to declare him out to other people. So Mary carried Jesus for nine months, but then Jesus was born and he preached the kingdom of God. So it wasn't about the birth, it wasn't about the pregnancy, it was about the bringing forth of Jesus. Yeah. Okay? Now this is really awesome because if you think about this, you know the salvation of the whole world was now sitting in a little egg inside the womb of a woman yeah. you think Satan would have went nuts to try to kill this baby he did, he did. Yeah. so Mary took a lot on here as I said the few things in here and I don't want to get into it just yet but um, anyways we won't get into that yet because I want to flow into this and I have only minutes left so let, let me just get to step through this or else I'll miss, I'll miss something okay so the angel said he shall be great do you agree with that I agree. how great is Jesus King of kings and Lord of lords. He's going to rule forever. Right? And that's what she comes next. Because the angel said he's the son of the highest. Mary didn't pick up on that the first time around. He's, he's the son of the highest. Okay, so she, and then she says, well, how can this thing be? And then the angel clarified, the highest shall come down and put the baby in there. Mary, calm down, you're all right. Yeah. Isn't that what the next book? And then he said, the important bit, he shall have the throne of David. Yeah. Yeah. And he, in other words, David was the king of Israel. Yeah. And David was promised that upon his uh, ancestry line, there would be a king that would rule. And then the, the angel clarified, his kingdom shall have no end. Okay, so he says, he shall be great, he shall have the throne of David, and his kingdom will have no end. And praise God, that was some calm, wasn't it? Yes. So Mary didn't have a lot of time to digest that. Didn't have a lot of time to work it out. And what if this, and what about that, and can I do this, and can I do that? She just had to trust God. You have to trust God. And the same for you and me this morning, saints. When God called you, like when God called Mary, I just want to spend a few minutes looking at what happened next to Mary. But when God called Mary, Mary didn't know that within a few months that the king of the country, King Herod, would be after every baby, trying to kill every baby, and she'd be going from, you know, from Israel to Egypt, dodging genocide, you know, back in again, all these different things that would happen. But praise the Lord, it wasn't her, it was God protecting the gospel that was on the inside of Mary's womb. Praise the Lord. Amen. And God will protect the gospel and call it upon your life. We will. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because it's the same thing, it's the same, you know, it's the same power, the same kingdom, that word of God that's on the inside of you. Yes. Praise God. Amen. 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 So the, um, I'm kind of running out of time, but look. Another thing I'm going to tell you here is the next thing Mary said is how shall this thing be? So I like hows. I like hows because how helps you understand what's under the bonnet. Yeah. How does that car work? Yeah. How does this happen? It helps you understand and I like that. That's my own mindset. I like to understand things deeper. So Mary said how shall this thing be? And then the angel said the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and the power of the, most, of the highest shall overshadow you. And I thought to myself that is exactly how everything happens in the kingdom of God. The first thing is, when you step out in the word, the Holy Ghost is your power. Yes. The Holy Ghost is your anointing. The Holy Ghost is your understanding. Your Holy Ghost is your prayer. The Holy Ghost is your worship. The Holy Ghost empowers you to do everything you do. And when you step out, the Holy Ghost, who is with you on the earth, it's like as if he primes you with the oil, and then the power of God comes on you. It's a joint effort, you know, and you'll see it. You'll see it in, in, in the uh, book of Corinthians when it talks about the gifts of the Spirit, you know, how the Holy Ghost is like as if anoints and then God moves on the anointing and Jesus empowers it. So God behaves as, a, as in three parts, Father, Son, Holy Spirit all the time, okay? 
It's, it's really powerful to see that. So in other words, what is that, you know, and I seen some of your uh, things um, online the other day, praise God, regarding uh, Wesley and stuff like that. And I was thinking like, Wesley did what he did because he was anointed with the Holy Spirit. He had the Holy Ghost. And like we would be fools to think that I could stand up and do the same unless the Holy Spirit was there. Because you see, the God side of it is the Holy Ghost and the Father. The Holy Ghost and the Father. You see, you see the connection? It's like spark petrol. You know? <laughs> Boom! You know? If you don't have the spark of the petrol, you're not going to get a bang. And I really believe it's the Holy. So we should cherish the Holy Spirit. We should be very careful not to grieve the Holy Spirit. We should always appreciate the Holy Spirit. Is our fire. He's our anointing. He's our call. Praise God. Okay, so let's move on really quickly. Okay, so I want to look at things from Mary's perspective. So she had a proposal. She had a purpose described to her. And she had the how explained to her. Okay, so she was given a proposal by the, by the angel. She was given the purpose of God upon her life. And remember I was saying this is just eternal. And she was just given some details of how this was going to happen. And then Mary said, yes. Just like that. Two minutes in, yes. Because she just knew. But the one thing I want to say to you is this, saints. Mary did not short circuit the call of God because of the details that followed. And the details that followed was this. There's a few, two or three things that happened, okay? And one thing in Luke 2, verse 35, and I mentioned it last week, um, she brought the child Jesus eight days later into the temple. A prophet took the baby up in his hands. His name was Simeon, and he prophesied over the child. And then he turned to Mary, and he says, Yea, and a, soul shall, a sword shall pierce your own soul also. Did you ever see that scripture? What did that mean? What does that mean? Mary had bought into this. Mary had bought into the, the mother connection with this baby. She was going to love this baby. She was going to connect with this baby. And yet the purpose of this baby was to die on a cross. Be rejected of everybody. Be rejected of religion. And be totally innocent. And Mary's heart was going to break because of the call of God that she was carrying. I don't know how to describe that even. It was going to conflict with her own soul. Mm -hmm. It was going to conflict with the purpose of her own soul. And it was going to break her heart. Yeah. And we know that that bears out, because we know that as Jesus was on the cross with his last breath, the Bible testifies that she was there watching him die. Her own son being crucified on the cross. Naked, shamefully exposed in front of everybody, cruelly beaten, Mary was there and yet she was willing to endure that for the sake of God and for the sake of Calvary there were the details there were the details that she picked up in the spirit that the angel never said I'll do this for you Lord you know and it kind of really in, in um, there's lots more things I could say um, we, we see little snippets of it in Luke 2, 48, when Jesus was young, young, he was 12, he was in the temple. Remember when he scooted off and he was with the, with the teachers and Mary said this, he says, and when they saw him, they were amazed. And the mother said unto him, son, why hast thou dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I sought thee sorrowing. The girl, her heart was broken because she lost her 12-year-old kid. So we do see that the connection was there. You know, when, another time was when, you know, when the, the Jesus changed the water into wine and yeah. And he says, woman, <laughs> what have I to do with thee? There was still that mother-son thing going on there. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Now, the, what I wanted to say to you is this, since when we, you know, when we become Christians, and I remember my own calling and how the Lord, we just got to remember that when God calls us, he calls us to be part of, you know, the fact that Jesus is the great. He is the son of the highest. He shall have the throne of his father, David, and his kingdom will have no end. And you were part of that this morning. You were carrying part of that on the inside of you. Yet, like Mary, you will suffer the details of having to carry Christ, having to raise Christ, having to avoid, you know, Herod, having to move from place to place, watch him grow up and watch the call of God pulling him away from you, even at 12 years of age, to the point where you're broken hearted because he's in the temple it's like as if the call of God will pull against your flesh and your flesh will want to live your flesh will want to enjoy itself your flesh will want to feed itself your soul will want to be comforted and yet the kingdom of God is pulling and pulling and pulling to the point where your flesh will absolutely die That's true. 
and yet the kingdom of God. But at the end of it all, at the end of it all, he will be on that throne and you will rule him. Because Mary is before him now, not as his mother, but as, as the, the redeemed of the Lord. Yeah. Praise God. Okay? So an example of that would have been, and I can show you that in the Bible, because this details came out one time before, in Paul's commission. Remember Paul fell off his donkey and he went into uh, Damascus? And then the Lord spoke to Ananias and, and says, go and pray for this character. His name is Paul. He says, I have chosen him. And God said this in nine verse, Acts 9, verse 15 and 16. But the Lord said unto him, go thy way, for he is my chosen vessel unto me to bear my name among the Gentiles. So God is calling Paul to bear his name among the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. And then he said in verse 16, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Wow. So Paul was not going to be getting a white suit. No. He was not going to be getting a Cadillac and a big no. um, $500,000 um, a year salary in order that he could proclaim the gospel on television. If you want to know about it, and I haven't time to talk about it this morning, if you want to know about this, it's in actually 2 Corinthians 11, verse 23 to 33, and then 2 Corinthians 12, verse 1 to 10. Paul was asked to, by the people of Corinth, show me proof that you're an apostle. Show me the proof that you're an apostle. Do you know what Paul said? He said, I was in shipwrecks, I was in sufferings, I was in fastings, I was in beatings, I was in, he said, all for the sake of the gospel. He pointed at his suffering. <laughs> and yet he pointed at, you know, the revelation he had and how he was taken up to heaven, but his main emphasis is on what he had to suffer for the kingdom of God. And that was all attached to the small print of the gospel. And in 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 9, the Bible says that Paul besought the Lord, please God, take this thorn away from me. And the Lord said unto him, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness Mary was weak she was a little girl you saw her heart was broken all the way through her life because she knew she was carrying the Lamb of God she knew her cousin's son was going to go into the wilderness and get his head chopped off you know and he said most gladly therefore Paul said will I rather glory in my weaknesses and infirmities that the power of Christ might rest upon me Praise God. Now, I was doing this message last night and I was nearly wrapped up. And I had one other scripture came to me. And the scripture was Matthew 16, verse 24 and 26. Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Okay? So God clearly tells us, you know, the gospel of glory is on the inside of you. And you can get excited about that realize that that will conflict with you and your flesh and your life because it says in the next scripture whosoever shall save his life shall lose it but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it yeah. and I thought to myself Lord yeah that's a good scripture and I says I must look up that scripture and do you know what I did I reached for my phone and I was going to look up the scripture because I have a bible on my phone and when I lifted up the phone there was a wee message coming from Nigel and he says hey folks this is live remember that yeah <laughs> So it was kind of a YouTube link that was live and it distracted me. I went, what's Nigel at? Oh, he's put up a YouTube thing. And I pushed the YouTube link and here was me looking for Matthew 16, 24. Couldn't find it, didn't know the reference. So I had to look it up. Looked up the live link and there was this preacher standing on the stage and he said, literally, as I put it on, he says, and then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man shall come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. I said, thank you, Jesus, that's my reference. <laughs> I didn't have to go to my Bible. I just said, it was just absolutely, utterly amazing. But this boy put it up. I clicked the link, and your man told me the word, the scripture. And I said, thank you, Lord. And I woke up this morning, and a big rainbow went. And I really believe, saints, that the Lord wants you to know that the suffering that you are having is not because of the devil as per se, but it's because of the glory of the kingdom that's on the inside of you. And you are pulling for the kingdom and our flesh is just taking its toll, if you like. The enemy is pushing and Paul said, take this away from me. And the Lord says, don't worry about it. Your flesh will take a hammering, 
He says, but you will be okay. You will make it. You know, if, if Satan could have aborted Jesus in the womb, he would have. And he couldn't do that because he couldn't. He couldn't touch Mary. He couldn't touch Jesus. He couldn't touch... Just as he cannot touch the kingdom of God on the inside of you. Amen? Amen. So you are precious and the kingdom of God is blessed. And time is short, so don't be worried about it. We'll all be scooting around in heaven someday going, that was a blink. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. Let's leave it at that.